Howdy friendos, just letting you know that the GUI Cube has officially launched their campaign world and adventure box Kickstarter. Be sure to go check out their campaign and pledge if you want to have some awesome adventures in an immersive 5th edition campaign setting, complete with tons of tools and handouts to make the lives of the GM so much easier. Despite them being sponsors, I've already backed the Kickstarter and just to show you how legit these guys are, they got funded in like, two minutes. They have great stuff, click the link in the description to check out their Kickstarter and show them your support. Howdy friendos, my name is Stuart and welcome to the part of the channel where we take a look at pop culture characters and determine what alignment they are in Dungeons and Dragons. This week we'll be taking a look at Disney's Hercules. No, there's really no follow up to that. This is just Disney's Hercules. There's only one movie and thank god- I'm sorry Stuart, I need to stop you for a second. What in the holy Zeus's jockstrap is this? Seriously, I thought this was a porno, but it's not. It's a, it's a film. It's, what is this? This is bizarre, I've never seen anything like it. Oh, uh, back, back to you. There's only one movie, and thank God, because after Undertale and Deltarune from the last two weeks, I need a break, so we're just gonna do something fun. And one of my favorite fun Disney movies is Hercules. This movie was written and directed by Ron Clements and John Musker, and actually has a really interesting release history. If you are interested, Lindsay Ellis released a 30-minute video essay talking about how it got made and why there are some really weird tonal problems in some places of the movie. I mean, the movie is still really good and it's fun, but it is kind of weird if you break it down like she does. Seriously, go check that out. Link in the, link in the dooblies, whatever the hell we're using. <laughs> Did you know that they removed voting? Like, like a lot of my early videos involved clicking on voting for the alignments. Um, but like, like I'm actually kind of nettled that they removed that feature because like, that was a lot of my audience engagement was people predicting what alignment the character was going to be. It kind of pissed me off, actually. But that's not what this video is about. You guys are here to learn in the alignment of Hercules and all the other characters. But I'm only going to cover a few today. Hercules and the other two favorites of the movie. I mean, you guys can probably guess who they are without me telling you, but let's save them for a surprise anyway. I know from my analytics that most of my audience is either from the Americas, the UKs, or Australia. So I'm assuming most of you have a pretty passing knowledge of Greek mythology, and I know some of you are probably pretty passionate about it, but you're just gonna have to leave that at the door today. This is Disney's Hercules, and not the one that you learned in seventh grade reading class. In this movie, Hercules was born to Hera and Zeus as a natural born deity. On the day of his birth, he was given tremendous gifts by all the gods of Olympus except one, Hades, who I'm just gonna get this out of the way and declare a nat 20 character on pure entertainment alone. Hell, he pretty much steals this movie. Anyway, after Hercules' birthday party, Hades returns to the underworld and inspires to overthrow the rest of the gods of Olympus by releasing the titans from their imprisonment, but was warned by the fates that should Hercules fight, then he will fail. Realizing that it is impossible to kill God under normal circumstances, he grabs a potion and has his minions, Pain and Panic, kidnap the baby, force feed him the potion, then tried to assassinate him, but due to him not drinking the last drop, he retained his godlike strength and was able to yeet them about 12 miles down the road. He is then found and raised by a normal human family. As he grows up, he realizes he doesn't fit in because of his ridiculous gifts that make him actively dangerous to to those around him. His parents inform him of his origins and he heads to the Temple of Zeus, where he is then told that his godhood would be restored if he becomes a true hero. That took more preamble than I expected from a 93 minute movie. Anyway, Hercules begins the movie at true neutral. Honestly, he's a pretty blank slate. Hercules' main motivation at the start of the movie is simply fitting in. He will help people if he thinks that will make him more accepted, but otherwise he just kind of keeps to himself, likely because of how dangerous he is and the bullying he faces because of it. And with all that out of the way, let's find out if he becomes a true hero or if he sticks to the classic Greek definition of hero. And yeah, there is a difference and we'll talk about that more in the post analysis. So let's go. <laughs> Hercules was told by his dad to stay by the cart and not bother anyone because he is a clumsy teenager and is prone to dangerous acts. And look at that! Due to him trying to play with a group of kids uninvited, he's wrecked the whole temple? Take that, Hercules! That's what you get for trying to fit in and have a healthy social life. What was my point? Right, chaotic neutral. Hercules, if you can prove yourself a true hero on Earth, your godhood will be restored. Hercules answers the call to adventure to restore his godhood. He is told to seek out Philatides, aka Phil, and get proper training. To which she then goes out and does. Lawful neutral. Rule number 96. Hey. 
After a Rocky Balboa-style training montage, Herc seems fully in control of his body and is ready to set out in the world. It's unclear how long this montage took, but I'm gonna guess, like, at least a year or two since Herc is getting close to his 18th birthday. Lawful neutral, twice, for the montage. <laughs> Sounds like your basic DID. Yeah. Moon destroy! Hercules, on his own accord, volunteers to save Meg from Nessius the centaur despite Phil's caution. And, uh, I know we're kinda playing fast and loose with Greek mythology, but that really is a good thing. Anyway, Meg tells him to go away, but Herc really felt compelled to save her and does so against her wishes. I'm just gonna say chaotic good. And oh yeah, it, just to shut up the naysayers, he did this before he noticed she was a slamming hottie. It's like I keep telling you, you gotta stay focused and... He then proceeds to flirt with Megara despite Phil and Pegasus' protest. You could say he's checking up on her, but come on, he's checking her out. Come on, guys, we all know. I mean, I ain't blaming him, but like chaotic neutral. <laughs> this is great! You're really choked up about this, aren't you? So this is kind of the driving point of the first half of the movie. Hercules is looking for natural disasters and other problems to solve because he wants to go back to Mount Olympus and be a god. He grabs Meg, ignores her protests about her fear of heights, and just takes off. Uh, neutral, I think? I'm not gonna not give him credit though. He does save two kids. I mean, they turn out to be pain and panic, but he didn't know that. That leads him to a fight with the Hydra too. He does defend himself and the town. I'm just gonna give him a neutral good for all of this and just make it easy. <laughs> So I know I normally give montages a multiple ding alignment change, but this is a special circumstance. Hercules is just kind of going through the motions of success here. He is seen as a hero like we see modern day athletes. It's a job. In fact, the weird detail about the appearance fees and royalties is just weird, but it does get the point across that Hercules does not view his heroism in the way that we in the modern day see heroism. Herc is just being a hero because it's his job. He likes doing it and it's getting him to where he wants to go, I'm gonna go ahead and give him a single neutral good for this montage, and I feel like that's fair because it's not altruism that he's doing this. It just so happens to align with his goals. Plus, this moment is just so wholesome. If you can't tell what's happening here, he bought his parents a nice house. That's sweet. Oh, just follow me out the window, around the dumbbells, you lift up the back wall and we're gone. Ha! <laughs> Meg convinces Hurt to go on a date and play hooky. It's cute and chaotic neutral. Stop it! No good lion scheme! Herc and Phil get into an argument about Meg leading to the third act failure. Phil is being really stupid here, being really vague and, and not at all clear. But movie's got a movie, I guess. Herc didn't mean to hurt him, so I'm gonna just say chaotic neutral. Any harm. Fine, okay, I'll give you that one. Meg is safe. Otherwise, you get your strength right back. Yada yada, fine print for the play book, okay? We're done. What do you say we shake him? Hercules makes a deal with Hades that he can't use his super strength for 24 hours while Hades wrecks the world. Hercules even acknowledges People are, are gonna get hurt, aren't they? Meaning he is fully aware that he is giving up public safety for his crush. Even though he's making a deal for her benefit, he is giving up the needs of the many for the needs of his would-be girlfriend. So I'm gonna call this chaotic good. However, I, I can already hear you typing, this very easily could be lawful evil because he is putting the well-being of one individual, one that he just personally likes over everyone else. However, seeing as how this is kind of his like heroic arc, is giving up his needs for another person. I'm just gonna call it chaotic good anyway. What are you doing? Without your strength, you'll be killed. There are worse things. Oh dang, I forgot about this. Hercules, even without his powers, goes off to fight the Cyclops that's destroying the town. Neutral good. I know what I did was wrong, but this isn't about me, it's about him. Oh, uh, now's a good time for Meg, I guess. When I was younger, she was my least favorite character, and now that I'm older, she's probably my second favorite character. Frankly, I couldn't tell you why. Meg is probably the most complicated character in that she is a person who is trapped in a supernatural contract. In her backstory, she sold her soul to Hades to save her boyfriend's life, who then immediately ditched her for some other gal. She is now bound to his will and demands, so she does some pretty shady things. She tries to recruit the River Guardian, she lures Hercules into a trap with the Hydra, 
and try to seduce him to learn his weakness. And in her defense, she got no joy out of doing any of it. In fact, she tried as often as possible to turn down Hades' propositions. The only time she willingly went along with the deal is when Hades straight up offered her total freedom in return. I'd really like to argue that she's lawful neutral at the beginning of the movie since she's kind of forced into that alignment. But at the end, I'd argue that she's completely lawful good, and after that self-sacrifice, and even ironically when Hercules had the opportunity to go rejoin the gods, she was fully willing to go away and be alone for his sake. Meg is best only girl. Unless you count the TV show, which we're not. Hercules goes and helps the gods, without prompting or anything else. Neutral good. We're in a river of death. Going once. Is there a downside to this? Going twice. Okay, 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 okay. You get her out. She goes. You stay. Hercules makes a deal for Meg's soul. He then gets her soul back and gets his godhood back and then immediately breaks his deal with Hades. Since he breaks his deal but is willing to completely give up his life for Meg, this is more chaotic good, but if you want to argue neutral good, I, I, it's not worth it for me. <laughs> Let's get ready to rumble! Ah, time for best character. Hades is fun. Hades, unlike in traditional Greek mythology, is more of a sort of Satan devil stand-in. He makes deals, enslaves people, and frequently abuses his underlings. He is an easy lawful evil. James Woods even said that when he started playing the role, he decided to play him as a sleazy car salesman. Honestly, I'd like to talk about him more since he's such a fun part of the movie, but whatever, you guys know what he's about. A life without Meg, even... An immortal life would be empty. I... I wish to stay on Earth with her. Maybe there are rules we don't know about here, but I guess I don't understand why he has to choose between godhood and his mortal girlfriend. Technically, I'ma call this chaotic good, since I guess these Disney gods have responsibilities he would need to, like, care for, but he's giving them all up for Meg? I got no idea. Either way, he's putting one person above others. So one thing I do like that they kind of play with in this movie is the difference between a Grecian hero and an actual hero. A Grecian hero is simply a powerful, complicated, and flawed individual. An actual hero as we know today is someone who puts others before themselves. And the movie actually does a pretty good job at realizing this. Hercules doesn't really take becoming a hero seriously because he saw it as a job and not a thing to strive for. And when I was younger, I was really annoyed, like, why don't they just tell him that the key was self-sacrifice? And like, if if they did, then that really wouldn't prove the point, would it? He would just be throwing himself in front of buses to protect normies without any sort of true emotion behind it. So in that regard, despite the flaws of these movies, this is really good. And no, I don't really care about traditional Greek mythology versus versus whatever mythology this movie is doing, but that part where he has to give up his godhood is weird, right? I don't know, maybe I'd like to imagine that Kingdom Hearts is the true sequel to this movie and Hercules eventually gets his godhood back and he's trying to hang out with Meg and Phil on Mount Olympus being immortal and badass and hanging out with Auron and Sephiroth. That would be cool, right? Oh, and one thing that always bugged me uh, that I just know, I literally just noticed this as I'm recording. Um, Hercules actually was a true hero before the self-sacrifice for Meg. Remember when the Cyclops was attacking the town and he put his, like, he put everyone's life above his? Um, that should have gotten his godhood back and that is a major plot hole that needed to be addressed. Um, no one noticed it. I don't see anyone calling it out and I'm smarter than everyone. Okay, thanks, bye. Subscribe, like, bye. Game. Set.